Welcome to the Friends of Friends podcast. Here are your hosts, Henry Hargitay and Jason Cole. Yeah. Yes, sir. Friends of Friends podcast. I'm Henry Hargitay. That is Jason Cole. You guys know the drill already. Go like, go subscribe, be a friend of a friend. We see it all. We love it and we appreciate it. Thank you guys. Let's get right into it because this guy, I can't wait to interview him. Uh, we've been talking about bringing him on for a while now. A true friend of a friend, James Feldeen. What's up, my brother? What's up, my guys? The assassin, Mr. Feldeen. We, we get a bucket. We, we really appreciate you doing be. this, man. <laughs> no problem, man. No problem. So for, first and foremost, I'm fortunate that I have to lead with this, but you are uh, recovering from an injury at the moment. So how are you feeling? What uh, Can you give us an update on your status? Uh, so, yeah, I basically tore my patella tendon. Um, you know, it's, com- not com- it's not a common injury, but, you know, a lot of basketball players get tendonitis, which is jumper's knee. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, back in the day, I was a little athletic, so it, it kind of caught up with me. Um, but, yeah, I tore my patella tendon. I tore a tendon um, that, that leads, like, my kneecap to my quad um, on the right side. So, and then it was like a bone that chipped a little bit. So it was like kind of three different injuries in one. Um, it was a freak accident. It was just, you know, I planted, I tried to, I tried to like finish at the basket. I planted and it just gave out basically. Um, doctor so said six months. Game? It was in game. I was about to come out too. The crazy thing is like, I did the same exact play two plays before. It was a rip through, uh, help defense was super late. So I kind of was just like trying to jump over the guy, kind of basic, not jump over him, but like, uh, like he was not going to block me. So I was right, going right, right. at the rim. Mm-hmm. Um, I did, I did the same play two plays before on a fast break. So it was, it was weird. Um, but yeah, I did it the second to last game in the season. Um, yeah. So it was, it was, it was difficult to handle at first. Uh, I was more of, of, you know, that was like my fourth injury in six months. I want to say. Oh shit. Five months. January. Yeah, five months because my first was five. So it was uh were they all knees? No, it was uh ankle, um ankle, calf. I mean COVID. COVID's an injury basically nowadays. So yeah. um yeah, so uh, I had COVID. Then I came back too early. I came back right away. Um I was out two weeks in the house, you know, barely eating, barely working out. Got got cleared the day before the game. Practiced that day, this shoot around, and of course, played me. What country minutes. was this in? Italy. Shit, man. Yeah, so yeah, it was difficult. Do you think at the age you're at now that mentally coming back from injury is like different than you know, say you were 24? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I was, I've been, I've been blessed. You know, like this is my 12th year. I just finished my 12th season overseas. Um, Most like people even, can't play five seasons overseas. I just yeah. want to say that. <laughs> yeah. Five. I mean, it, it, it was just, I mean, I was more, even at the hospital when I was waiting to see the doctor, the x-rays and make sure everything, you know, like what was the exact injury? I was still thinking like, man, thank God this happened to me at, at 32, uh, man, where am I? 33. So it's like, I'm, I'm kind of happy. You know, okay, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm settled now. Like my my life is 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 okay. So it's like I'm kind of happy at in that perspective. Right. Um. But also, I was still, you know, I still want to finish strong. You know, what I'm saying like I know right. I'm towards the end of my career, so I kind of wanted to finish a little on the good note. Um. But like I'm I'm positive, man. Like I honestly like I've been thinking recently, like not recently, like even before injury was like. That I was gonna take my time. Like I was gonna go overseas. You know, usually you go overseas August. You finish the season, the the, the regular season, mid May, beginning of May. And then it depends on what team you are. You go to playoffs or not. So let's say beginning of June, you're usually home. That's that's ten months. Right. You know what I mean, so I was just, and I did that twelve years straight, playing with the national team four years in a row in the summer. So it, like it caught up to me. You know what I mean? It was just I never really rested. I never really. You no, know, I barely go on vacation. Like I'm always on the move. Is I was I, I moved to I moved to a different state now. So it's like it's it's been it's been a lot. But I've been saying like I was gonna take my time and just sign late um, next season. So but this happened. So like now it's just forcing me. But you know it was difficult to work out in the summer. 
you know, it's hard. You know, some people, you know, you're younger, you work out, you you just working out, working out, but you need the rest. Right. Now like I'm really going. Yeah, like now I could really work on my body, you know, work on my legs, get my get my, you know, get everything right. So I feel like yeah. this is a blessing to discuss. Give yeah. us a rundown of, of your career, where it started to where you are now. So I graduated Cardinal Hayes uh, 2006. Um, I committed to Quinnipiac, I want to say, right before the season, right before my senior season. Who was so the coach senior, at Quinnipiac at that time? Uh, Joe DeSantos. Got it. Um, yeah, so and that was the year Coach Lowe's came in. Uh, my senior year, he came in that summer. Um, but he was really cool with with the assistant coach that was recruiting me, Jared Grosso. Yeah, that was um, at Iona. Shout out to Jared yeah, Grosso. He's, he's at Bryant now. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I then I went to Quinnipiac, um, you know, four years, graduated 2010. Um, my first my first year overseas, I went to a I went to second division Spain, um, in Lugo in Lugo, it's a small city up north. Um then I re-signed there in that the following summer, so I stayed there two years, um, and then I, I went. Then I made the jump to ACB, which is the first league in Spain, which is considered okay. second best, you know, second best league in the world behind oh, NBA, shit. of course. Um, oh. I signed a I signed a two year deal there. Um, then I went to Italy, Cantu, another small another small team, but it was kind of bigger because we was playing European competition. You know, I don't know if most people know, it's like in Europe, some teams play only the national team, like the National League, and, and some teams play all around Europe. They play teams from, you know, Spain, Italy, um, Turkey, wherever, Slovenia, Serbia, everywhere. Then after that, I um, uh, played with the national team. Um, that was my first summer playing with the national team. The Dominican and national then, team? Dominican Republic, yeah. And then, well, I, oh, then I went to Greece, um, Panthinaikos. I played in um, one of the best teams in Europe, probably, we would say, um, historically. Um, we played Patino in the really league, which is, coaching Yeah, them, right? Patino coached there, yeah. Right. After some years I left, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we played in EuroLeague, which is, you know, another top league. You know, that's where you play, like, you know, the Luka Doncic and, mm-hmm. you know, all those European players. That come to the league, huh? Yeah, that come to the league. And then after that, I signed there two years. Um, then I went to another EuroLeague team in Serbia, uh, which is the best was the best team in, in Serbia. Um, I had a terrible experience, but you know, it was you know, it was a lesson learned. Mm-hmm. Um then after that I went to Israel. Um, I went to Jerusalem for two years. I, f- I was following that closely. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was the red team, right? Yeah, that was the red team. You yeah. killed that it was, over I think there. That, I think that was the summer I went. I worked out with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was training. That's why I was yeah. following super close because you had just yeah. passed the physical. But you killed out there. Yeah, yeah, I played well. That was that was probably the best two years of of, of my career, honestly. Oh like, shit! It was just on and off the court. It was just you know I was already older, so I had the experience. Yeah. You know, I knew I knew a lot of the players. The coach was really cool. The organization was amazing. Um, mm. But yeah, that was probably the best too. And then you know, COVID hit. I I, I could have still been there, man. That was that's like that's something that was crazy. I, I could have still been there. Um, you know, they wanted to keep me the rest of my career, honestly. But COVID hit. You know, they had money problems, and you know, I was I was I had to move on. But Damn. then after that, I went to. Spain. Last year, I went to Spain, uh, Sevilla, back to the ACB, like I said. Then after that, I went to, then I did a whole 360. I went to uh, Middle East. I went to Kuwait. Uh, first time first time ever playing in the Middle East, which was totally different. Basketball is different. Yeah. Lifestyle is different. You know, it's, it's a Muslim country. So, I mean, uh, you just look up the rules. It's a list of them that like, you can't do is crazy. Uh, were you successful? I was actually. I was. I was actually played really well. Okay. Um, it was. It was more of a show, you know. It was give give the foreigner the ball and do what you gotta do. Got it, wasn't, it. it was. It wasn't something I was used to. Like right. they, like for example, they were mad at me because I was leading the league in assists, which I never did in my career. <laughs> but they were like, "No, you're passing too much." 
<laughs> you gotta give sixty balls. Yeah, and I was I was getting like sixty five point game. Yeah, it was crazy. But you know, I had my first triple double of my career there. So it was like it was it was mixed. It was like I'm doing well, but in their eyes, I'm really not. So it was like, man, what? So then I just, I talked to my agent. I got up out of there. I went back to Europe. Um, I went to Italy this year in Bologna. I went mid season though. I went in December. Uh, there was already twelve games in, thirteen games in. So it was a, a different experience because I never did that in my career. Um, but it was it was it was it was it was definitely a story to tell this year. But um, glad you still, you know, you still positive and you still thinking ahead, even and that, with yeah. the injury and all that. That's the thing that I find so amazing too. It's like, you know, I've been to a few of the countries that you named. You know, Israel comes to mind. When I was there, it literally just felt like I was in a on a different planet. It's a different world, and you know, just so many of the countries you named are truly a different world from the Bronx and you know this area that we're from here. <laughs> Um, do you think you've kind of found like peace in traveling into the unknown? Because overseas, you know, when you look back at, on your career, like that story is worth a thousand words. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, write a book. Like, you, like, yeah, like you said, it's, it's weird. I never really I mean, I always thought about like I was never I was never like, let's put this. I was never like scared of going like when it was time to go. I wasn't like. Even if I was going to a new team, new country, I wasn't nervous. It, it was it was just like, all right, man, another year, you know, this this gonna feed my family, take care of a lot of people. You know, I get to see this part of the world um for a couple of years, you know. So he was too driven. He had goals on it. Yeah, mind. I was I was definitely he was already sure. set. It. He was like this yeah, is I it. Was already, like my first my first year, of course, was but my first year I kind of was like super excited. Because I was like already mm. getting tired of New York and and all that stuff, so it was just like I don't know. It was it was it was weird though. Like I never like all all I get is mad is like damn, I miss the food, I miss my family. You know, I'm gonna right. be out there alone for for most of the time. You know, I get visitors, but for most of the time, be alone. I gotta interact with new people, meet new people, start conversations, and I'm not really that person to open myself up to people. You know what I'm saying? So it's mm. more of a all right, man, I'll see y'all later. I'll see y'all tomorrow in practice type stuff. Right. Um, Still being a loner. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? That's 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 who I am. So it's but I get I never I never like I, I get excited. Like like this 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 past summer when I was like signed to Kuwait, that was I was kind of like because I've heard stories, you know, some some of my friends played in the Middle East, so they told me a couple stories. So it's just like, all right, man, let me just, let's try it. You know what I mean? Like, but when I got there, I was like, yeah. It's, it's, Those stories were fucking true. <laughs> yeah, the stories are you, crazy. Can you yeah. share a Kuwait story with us? Um, <laughs> Let me see. I, there was no alcohol. Le- legally, you couldn't drink alcohol. So there was no bars. <laughs> there was no clubs. Um, what? You know, they had... I, I'm going to just say this. I was drinking homemade wine from somebody. Like somebody <laughs> made homemade wine and I was drinking it. Would Tastes you have like been beer. like in trouble if someone found you drinking that, you think? Yeah, you get arrested. Oh, my like God. A, a so American, it's not sold out there at all? No. Like, so if you like, let's say, you know, you can fly with alcohol into into cities or countries. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah. Have it in your oh, bag. Like you brought your own. They check your bag. They check your bag. So. They have people at the airport that take the bottles that people bring because, you know, you don't know the actual because it is that I, I want to say that's the only Muslim country that you can't drink in every yeah. other Muslim country. Yeah. You could technically drink in like you won't get arrested. So like people still try to sneak it in. So there was like officers at the airport that search bags and take the alcohol. So they sell it back to <laughs> people. <laughs> so then they were they were charging. So let's say so like, scared. Like, they're coming yeah, up so like, off that. Yeah. So like my GM was no. like, yo, I know my GM was was of course he was Kuwaiti. So he was like, you know, I don't drink, but you know, I know a lot of people. I can get you a bottle. So I'm like, yeah, hell trying yeah. to get you arrested. <laughs> nah, nah. He was he was trying oh, to look oh, out. Oh. See, yeah, he was trying to look out. So I'm like, ah, right, yeah, let me know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, uh, like how like just so I could have the cash. I mean, like, yo, how much? He was like, three hundred and fifty dollars. How what? What was Fuck. it? The the magnum? No, shit? no, no. The regular, <laughs> the, the regular thirty dollar Jack Daniels. 
three fifty. So did you pay it? No. No. Oh. I wasn't. I wasn't that thirsty. I was, <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, you ain't that thirsty. Nah, I wasn't. Damn. I wasn't that 350? thirsty. 350? 350, bro. That's yeah, crazy. Was, uh-uh. That ain't right. Yeah, was, I got a question for you. Out of not even just the 12 years overseas, but four years in college, maybe in the summertime at Dykeman, Rucker, anywhere. Since you've been taking basketball serious, what's the highlight of your career? Oh, wow. it's a good question. Playing USA at the Garden. Yo, I was going to say that. He talked about that before the show. I love that. USA, playing USA at the Garden. Because, you know, I'm, I'm half Dominican, half American. You know? yeah. So, like, of course, I knew I was never going to play for the USA. So it was like, and my family, like, I'm more... You know, I'm more in tune with my Dominican side than my American side. You know right. what I mean? So I grew up without, I didn't grow up with my father. So I was just always with my Dominican side. So it's like, I'm fully Dominican, basically. So like right. when I got the call, like, oh, I could, uh, because I got my passport at a late age because I didn't know anything about passports. Like I just, uh, yo, I got my American passport. I go anywhere in the world. Right. But to play overseas is good to have an extra passport. So right. I got the Dominican passport as soon as I graduated college. You know what I mean? So they was like, oh, so you can play with the national team. So I'm like, man, playing with a national team. And I talked to my mother, my grandmother. They were like, hell yeah, man. You're going to represent us. Your last name is going to be back on the jersey. Like, you don't understand. That's Big special. Time. That's special. So, so I'm like. And really? it's in New York. And it was, but that was like, that was like, that was leading up to it. Like the first couple of years, we struggled, we struggled. But then like the last, then like two years before, before that. Like, that's when, like, it was me, Edgar, Francisco, you know, Carl played with us one time. Um, so we had some good guys. So then we we had to work to make to make that World Games. So, like, mm-hmm. being a part of that, you know, like, the 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 country didn't be in the World Games for, like, 30-something years before that. So it was like a buildup, and it was like, it made us, you know, it made us, made us feel good, you know? That, that's, that's crazy. But then when we found out we had USA at the Garden, it was just... Like it was, Who was just, on that USA team. You gave dudes some buckets, didn't you? Who was on that USA team? Uh, who wasn't? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, exactly. So uh, the starting five, I want to say, was Kyrie, Steph, <laughs> Steph at the two, James at the three, James Harden at the three. Um, at the four was uh, um, Ke- uh, Kenneth Fareed. And then center was Anthony Davis. Oh, okay. the four man, I don't think it was Ken Free. I think it was somebody else, but he played the Marcus Cousins. Mm. The Marcus Cousins That's and Anthony Davis. Power. Who'd you have to guard? Steph. <laughs> yeah. What was that like? Oh. Wow. He he wasn't he wasn't Steph as he's now. Right. He, he was he definitely wasn't like that. He's definitely got better. Mm-hmm. Like, wow, Every Orlando year. got number one pick. He called it. Or oh, we wow. called it. Live reaction um, to the lottery. You out in Florida right now? You in Orlando? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, Magic, and Magic just got number one pick. Oh, wow. shit. I didn't yeah. even see that. Who was, guarding, who was guarding you in that game? Steph. Steph so it came off the bench was uh, was Clay, um, Damian Litter, uh, Kenneth Fareed, DeMar DeRozan, uh, Rudy Gay, when Rudy Gay was nice. Yeah, Rudy Gay. Yeah. Uh, Derrick Rose was on the team, but he didn't play. He was he was resting, uh, missing somebody else. Paul George? Yeah. No, no, he he got hurt uh, a couple years later. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that was the team. So it was it was it was definitely it was a great experience, you know. And then we played them again at the World Games. Mm-hmm. So we played what them was twice. Your stat that line summer. like the first game. 14 at Madison Square Garden, but the coach, we was on time restriction. So it was kind of like he wanted everybody to play. Wow. You know, we was he getting was AAU shit. Yeah, I mean, I understood it. You know, we had a lot of Dominican guys, you know, from DR in New York playing in the garden, which is crazy to even say. You know, yeah. we had so many Dominican fans in the crowd. You know, yeah. it was so it was it was it was an unbelievable experience. Did any ounce of that feel like a home game for you guys? Yeah, yeah, it was for it was sure, right? Game. Yeah, it was like, like I, I, me personally, I had like 15 tickets and that's just me. So I know Edgar had like 15, 20. Francisco had like 15, 20. Francisco Garcia from Louisville? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
He was our three man. He was a yo. He's a sniper. He was our three man. Yeah, it was like his last season in the NBA too. So, mm. Yeah, yeah. Kimber Walker, Chris Brown sitting front front row. Like it was, it was just, it was, it was crazy. It was a, a crazy experience. Wow. That's unbelievable. All right. Last question before we get out of here. Cause we're over time here. Um, Jay, if you had to give him uh, like a comparison to a player, who is his game like? Uh, I would say like a Bradley Bill. He got, a, he got a lot of tools in his bag. He could run the one if he need to, but he play off the ball. He is slash. He could slash, but he can shoot it. You see, if, if you just watch Bradley Bill, he's so simple. Because if he open, he's going to shoot it. Yeah. He don't wait for defense and try. He's efficient. So that's yeah. what I, I would say Bradley Bill. On a scale. I never heard that one before. That's who'd high praise. Who, who'd you hear before? Um, who, who I usually get? I mean, yeah, Francisco, just because of, you know, our complexion and we both Dominican, we both can shoot. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. So who do people I mean, compare? That's something you to? I think about. I don't know. Like, who do you? Who would you compare yourself to in the NBA? In the NBA right now? Yeah. <sighs> that's tough. Um, or ever, who did you see yourself the closest to? The crazy thing is, like, when I was growing up and like coming up, when I like really got overseas, I ain't really like. Watch Trying anybody? Yeah, I yeah. Like I ain't that. really like study. You know how people study people? Like I yeah. really didn't study anybody. I already knew. Better. I already knew at a certain age. I want to say by my senior year, like I knew what I do great and what I can't do. Okay. So it was like I always heard like, "Yo, whatever you could do, great. Just do that. Don't do what you can't do, or or work on what you can't do in the summer. But when it comes really down to it." Game five on five and it's mean sign, do what you do great and live with it. Right. So that's what I've just been doing. Like, I mean, of course, over time, you know, I work on my handle. Now I could get to the basket easier. I could I couldn't really play pick and roll when I first came out overseas. And, you know, working with a lot of trainers, working with a lot of ball handling, like guards and working out with Edgar, working out with Kimba. Like it it, it helped me. So that just evolved at like with a later age. James, do you know who, uh, who my NBA comparison is? <laughs> Jay, Jay, uh, this is Jay just Jay what Reddick? they. This is you just what to... they say. Oh, oh, what did you say? I never Jay said Jay this. Is, no, no, come on. Because I'm a white. Because I'm a white guy. Now nah, you it, probably this, can shoot. Of course, I can shoot. But my NBA comparison. This is just what streets say about me. This isn't from me or anything. Jake, go ahead. What does say? Serge Ibaka. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just saying you that's are, what they uh, say. What, that's what they which say. Which one? Which one? Now or before? Oh, B- before Pri- Prime Prime oh, Sergio. Right. Okay, okay, uh, OKC. OKC. Uh, OKC. OKC. Okay. That's a good one though. That's a. That's a. He, he was good at OKC. I like that one. It's just what streets say. Streets. I gotta. Saying, I gotta right? watch. I gotta watch some film though. I gotta see that. I gotta see that. <laughs> we gonna send. We gonna send. Jay. I'll send it. Don't worry. I'll send it. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Let's get out of here. Friends of Friends podcast. Go like, go subscribe. James Feldine. That's James a wrap. Feldine. Uh, appreciate thanks, y'all. Thanks man. for the time, man. We'll talk soon. Be a yes, friend sir, of a appreciate friend. Appreciate y'all.